All right, let's open this up to the public. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I hope you're excited. I'm excited. I'm uh, very excited. I've got everything. Um, can you can you see my screen? Right, everything sounds good. Looks good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Loading, loading. Yeah, everything looks good. You sound good. Excellent, excellent. You look good. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, going through the oh baby things today. I gotta accept. Uh, I was supposed to do this with someone else. Are they? They just moved a different day. Yo, no. Uh, Sevi just had to cancel at the last minute. I guess. Um, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it would have been nice to have like an extra person, but I'm sure you'll you'll do fine. Hopefully, I cover everything that he had in mind because I um. There's like a million different ways to animate in CSP, which is actually awesome. But I'm gonna talk about how I do it. I guess. Well, that's perfect. I know a lot of people don't know where to start when it comes to animating CSP. They try to stick to, like, uh, the f Flash route or, like, Adobe Animate, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so the chat for this is right above this, correct? Art, Art Office Hours chat? Yeah. Yep. Art All right. Great. Because what I'm going to do is, um, I guess I'll just start now since it's it's uh, two past. Um, so, of course, today I'm going to talk about animating Clip Studio Paint. And since uh, this is the Newgrounds, we're, we're all from Newgrounds, we all have Newgrounds history. I'm sure a lot of us probably have animated in Flash at some point. So I'm going to be talking about stuff that I, you know, experienced moving from Flash to Clip Studio. I mean, I still work in Flash a lot. I worked in Flash for the better part of the last decade, probably longer than that. I'm pretty old. And, um, you know, what's different, what's the same, um, you know, what what you're used to in in Flash and how easy it is to actually move over to Clip Studio Paint and animate. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the basic setup of animating in Clip Studio because the one thing you'll you've probably noticed if you open Clip Studio is that uh, there's a lot of buttons and there's a lot of different things. And I also I should have a magnifier running. Yeah. So some of the some of the buttons are kind of small. So I'm hoping that I can. Uh, it'll be easier to see when I move around and um, show some of those things um, because I'll be saying, oh, you know, click on this and it's like this five by five pixel icon that no one can see. So, um, all right, let's uh, maximize this so I can see what I'm doing here. All right. So basic setup, when you go into Clip Studio and I'll just... You know, you go to you go to new file, and you can really just set up anything. I mean, there is a little thing for animation here, uh, and if I just zoom in here, it's the, you know, you've got your width and height resolution, which you generally don't want to mess with. It's default 72 screen, same as uh, Flash, honestly. Um, it can set up a timeline for you automatically. We're going to talk about that later. Um, there's also stories, which are not really important right now. Um, and you got your basic stuff, you got your frame rate, um, you play back time, which is not in seconds or anything. That is uh, actually in frame. So you just divide it by your frame rate, um, scenes and shots, all that stuff. So, you know, pretty basic stuff. I think we're all familiar with uh, what those do. Um, but just so that uh, I, you guys understand uh, timelines and stuff, I'm going to set up a file that doesn't have one so, I'll can, so that you know how to make one. Because actually, um, you can have multiple um, timelines. Did the, did the zoom not work? Uh, the the only thing that doesn't work is like the window for like file or whatever. So all it showed was your workspace still. Oh, is the um, how do I watch the stream that I'm I'm showing right now? Is like, there a way to do that? Like actual display capture, like everything that's currently on your screen, like desktop, basically your monitor. Yeah, can I uh screen share that? Yeah. Yeah. And it'll it'll show any windows that pop up in like CSP, you know. Okay. Let me um switch to Oh, screens. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I see what's going on here. All right. There we go. All right. So now is now is it showing up when I go to file new and stuff? Yes. 
Okay, so Lord I was just talking. Geez. There was just and there was just nothing there. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I, didn't, I couldn't interrupt. You were on a roll. I probably sounded like a madman right at the beginning. Like, there's, I'm just talking about it's something no one can see. Um, all right. Anyways, so let's start back from the beginning. Um, all right. So uh, when you when you go to start a new file in Clip Studio, there's a lot of different things. There's illustration, you know, comic. At the end there, you'll see animation. Now, there's one thing that to keep in mind. Uh, there's two versions of Clip Studio. Uh, there's EX, and then there's the basic one. EX is like the full, you know, suite, and it, it, you can have a timeline as long as you want. I believe in the original version, the cheaper one, there's a limit to how many frames your animation can be. I don't know what that arbitrary limit is, but if you're generally interested in like, you know, some basic loops and stuff, um, it's probably not going to be a big deal. Um, but, uh, if you are interested in doing longer format animation, something that's a couple seconds long, it's 30 frames. Okay. Someone said in the chat. So, you know, that's not a lot of frames, but, um, you know, it's something it's at least, this is what I would say. If you have the basic version and you only have the 30 frames available to you, try animating in it and, and see how you feel about it. And if you like it, then upgrade. If not, you know, maybe it's not for you. But today I'm going to talk about you know all that all that stuff and so okay so now you guys can see all the numbers and, and stuff here. Um, so it's it's your basic stuff that you see in Flash. You know you got your uh, width and height, resolution, name of your timeline, frame rate, number of frames. So 120 divisible by 24. I'm not going to try and do math right now, but you know that's how it works. Um, but like I said, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to show how to make a timeline um, up here in, in Windows. If you go to all the, uh, you know, the window drop down up here, you can see that there is a setting for timeline with a checkbox. Someone said EX is super worth getting, and I definitely agree. Um, my timeline is checked right now. The hotkey for that is actually X, the default hotkey. Um, so Normally, this is not here, so I'll just go ahead and uh, turn it off. And this would just not be here at all. But by turning this on, you get access to all of the uh, timeline tools at the bottom. Um, if, you know, I, in Flash, the timeline obviously is usually on the top by default. I've been used to that all my life, but um, I just left it down here because I was just like, not a big deal. Um, see if I can, oh, not that one. Um, okay, so here you got new timeline and edit timeline. So generally, you know, if you were going to open a, uh, a new file that wasn't an animation file, the first thing you're going to do is click new timeline and it's going to give you the same, um, oops, sorry. It's going to give you the same, uh, basic options here, name of the timeline, the frame rate. Playback time. So uh, this is a little bit more intuitive than when you start a new file and you say you want to start an animation. What you can actually do is you can specify the number of seconds and then the number number of frames, seconds plus frame. There's a couple of options here. There's even a time code option. I like playback time because uh, I like to be able to see you know how many exact frames it's going to be. And then uh, this is something that uh, is pr I don't think is in Flash uh, is division line. So this is um, the number of frames that get divided into chunks that, like, let's say you animate on twos. Um, so you probably want a division line by, like, eight. Um, I like to animate on threes, so I set up a division line of six. This doesn't actually affect um, your animation in any uh, discernible way. What it does do is it gives you a, a good, um, you know, visual cue of where your frames are. So that's just... I mean, it's something that you could, could totally ignore, but I find it to be a very useful tool. Um, so I'm just going to set up a new timeline, press OK there. And what you'll see down here is uh, you got a layer and layer one and paper. So paper is essentially just the background. It's, imagine it being um, basically in, in Flash, you just have that basic white uh, backing. Um, someone said they still can't see the window. Um, is it, uh, working for everybody yeah, else it's, or? it's all working. Like when you went through divisions and like frames, that window was up. Okay. It, it, it does zoom in, right? Yes. It zooms in every oh. time you zoom in. Okay. 
I, I was worried there for a second. <laughs> it's going great, honestly. Yeah, like I tested it all last night and I was like, oh, this is for us. perfect. <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, paper is the background layer. Um, I mean, you can delete it, but then you'd have the annoying uh, checker pattern in the background, the transparency. Um, and, and layer one is, you know, the default layer that you start with. Um, but that is, uh, there's more to this story. But first, I'm going to talk about uh, one thing, and that is, what should you draw with when you're animating? So one of the things is that in, in Flash, there's just a brush. There's really nothing else. In, in Clip Studio, there's all these different brushes and brushes and pens and everything. Now, if you want to get creative, you know, you could try and paint with a water, you could try and animate with like a watercolor brush or whatever. Um, but honestly, uh, what you probably want to use is a basic pen. Uh, there's a pen in, in Clip Studio called the G Pen. And uh, what I like to do is I like to set it up so that uh, it doesn't have any uh, pressure sensitivity when it comes to the size of it or opacity. I just like a thick line that's consistent. And so what you have to do is, and we're going to talk about this a couple times uh, in this, it's this uh, sub tool. It's a little wrench. So whenever you click a brush, there's a tool property uh, panel underneath it or next to it. And you get a couple options, brush size and opacity, but you'll notice that there is no uh, option to change the, you know, pens, uh, the, the way it reacts to sensitivity if you've got a tablet. So this wrench down here, it's the sub tool detail uh window and what this does is it opens up a bunch of other extra stuff that you can do to change how the tool works um and so when you go down to like brush tip and brush shape you can see all these different options um and uh when you click this little uh i don't know what this is supposed to be it's just a square with a line through it you can see there's an option for pen pressure um so i always have that turned off when i'm animating and then same for size, you click this here and you can turn off the pen pressure, um, turn off, turn the tilt on or off. I mean, this is just a personal preference, um, but I think it helps a lot when you have those off when you're animating because it reduces boiling and uh, all the other, you know, inconsistencies that can happen when you're animating. So, um, yeah, that's not really like a rule to this. That's something you have to keep in mind while I'm talking about this, is that there's more than one way to animate in, in uh, Clip Studio Paint. There's not a right or a wrong way. I'm just talking as someone uh, who has done, you know, a lot of work for, you know, I've, I worked on an anime recently last year, and, um, you know, they, they that's the kind of line that they want. They want a, like a consistent line that looks the same no matter where it is or or on what it's on. So that's something I had to, you know, set up myself. So um, let's talk about setting up a timeline now. So we already have our timeline here, but one of the things that you're probably wondering is how do you make keyframes? Uh, am I allowed to say what anime? Yes, I worked on Sleepy Princess in the Demon's Castle. It is a cute little anime that came out last year. Very funny if you watch episode six. Um, about in the middle of it, there's like one or two minutes of animation that is all mine. Um, I highly recommend it. It's, it's, uh, it's very, it's very fun. You're in the credits uh, is RTIL too. That is correct. Yes. They let you pick who you want to be credited as. And since my real name, Ryan Miller is incredibly generic and boring and I share it with a hockey player who's far more famous than I ever will be. <laughs> uh, I use my internet name because no one else has that name. Um, so, and, and if you Google it, you can find me on Twitter, which is, uh, what everybody on, in Japan uses. So when you are, uh, uh, what do you think I should do for a mod concept? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what you mean. Um, uh, up here, there's a, there's a button that says a new animation folder. So you need a, uh, to make animation folders, to make animation in Clip Studio work, because this is not, this timeline is not like make new keyframe and then you can draw on it. You can see it's actually grayed out. You can make new frames, but there's already a frame here. So when you make an animation folder. Let me cancel this here. When you make a new animation folder, you'll see folder zero. You can rename this, obviously. And when you go 
everything's done through animation folders here because once a once frames are in here and they're they're represented as layers in the layer window so when we go over back to our uh, layer panel which i'm sure you're all familiar with if you've used photoshop or you know gimp or any of those things any layer you put in here is going to become basically a keyframe um, but one thing that's neat about this is that when you make a new frame in this animation folder if i click new animation cell that's what they're called cells um it says one and then if i make a new one it'll say two and if i make one in the middle it'll say one a and so on and so forth so um, it, it tries to keep it organized for you each one of these is a layer in the layer window so you do have to keep that in mind you can move them around by clicking and dragging um, you can select multiple by uh, you know clicking down and dragging get the box selection move them around you can see this here the edge so this is where it, it begins and ends so if i let's just very quickly i'll show you um if i draw something on each frame and then play it you'll see what happens so let's zoom out here go to uh, frame one and i'll just put a one and then on this one i'll put two and on this one i'll put three and i'll just move this over and there's a there's a handy little play button right here so one two three and each layer is uh and even when you select the layer over here on the on the right it will actually move to its place in the timeline so that's kind of nice obviously um i would say compared to flash this is not as intuitive and i, I think it's actually one of the things that uh, flash does a little bit better but uh, because of the workflow of how uh, Clip Studio functions, um, it makes sense. It can get a little messy. We're actually going to go early, later, uh, pretty soon here, we're going to go to a, a thing I already made from a few months ago and uh, to show off some other things. Um, so you can see how it has similarities to the Flash timeline. Obviously, you get a little preview uh, down here. You can kind of faintly see what I drew uh, in these little boxes. And you can adjust this. Um, there's a lot of things you can change. Um, and if, if you're wondering what these other uh, buttons are here up here, so the new animation cell, you can specify cells, you can delete. You can also just do that in the context menu. One thing to keep in mind, and this is something that I, I, I really dislike about, uh, it's probably my least favorite thing about animating Clip Studio Paint. Uh, is that, you know, in Flash, if you need to copy and paste uh, multiple frames across multiple layers, you can just select all of them and do that. You cannot do that in Clip Studio Paint. You can only do one folder at a time. Uh, so if I copy and paste these layers here, um, it will, well, you have to actually do it. You have to right click and copy the actual frames or it will copy the layers. You can see what actually happened here. When I click Control C, Control V, it made copies outside of the animation folder because it was treating them as uh, regular layers. And so now there's a folder inside of a folder. It's just an, it's it's not what you want. So when you copy and paste here on the timeline, you can see I got more frames. But if I was, for example, to make a new animation folder and make some uh, frames in here, one, two, three. And you can see now that they're in a new folder, I can they're called one, two, three, and there's no overlap or anything. But if I copy these and paste them, oops, what did I just do there? If I copy these layers and try to paste them, it makes a new folder and it doesn't do what I want. So you have to do it one at a time. So if your animation has multiple folders and you need to copy and paste frames, you have to do it by hand. Um, that is the only thing that I would say is uh, not so intuitive in animating in Clip Studio Paint. Um, so the next thing I'm going to talk about, since we've got timeline and keyframes uh, set, is we're going to go, now we're going to close this basic one, we're going to go to something I animated uh, a few months ago with uh, quite a, a bit of folders and stuff. And now we're going to talk about uh, onion skinning. So onion skin is something that I'm sure most of you are already familiar with. Um, onion skinning basically allows you to uh, see a little ghost image of the frame before and after the one you're working on so that it's easier to do in-betweens. Um, 
So the onion skin works pretty much the same. Uh, you can, if I zoom in here, uh, it is this button, enable onion skin. And you get, uh, you know, the green is the uh, one uh, before it and the blue is after. You can change this if you want. There is actually uh, an option in here to edit the onion skin settings. And I believe it's here. Yes, onion skin settings under show animation cells. So uh, you, can, you can specify how many cells you want to show before and how many show, cells you want to show after. You can change uh, what color you want them to be. You can change the opacity level and the steps. The step opacity is basically how much opacity should be diminished when the further they go out. Um, I don't usually do more than one. So, uh, you know, I would not, um, it can get really busy, obviously. Um, so that's, you know, pretty much exactly the same as, uh, as Flash. Obviously, in Flash, you would get some kind of onion skin slider here on the timeline. Um, but the t this here, only the only purpose this really serves, uh, the, the only time you'll ever be looking up here, uh, is um, the working range of where your animation starts and ends. So you can see these little blue bars. You can actually drag these um, and uh, specify the, the working area and ignore the rest of the frame. So if I play this, it's only going to play these few couple frames. And you can see the red bar moving across. It's kind of lagging right now because I've got um, my streaming software working. Um, but it, you can see it's not even playing all the other stuff outside of it. So this is a good way to focus on a certain section of the animation that you're working on if you don't want it to play through uh, all the other uh, frames. So um, same principle for coloring with onion skin. Uh, and we're going to talk about coloring in a second because it's there's a really cool uh, thing that Clip Studio does that you cannot do in uh, Photoshop or other uh, raster-based animation programs and software. Uh, you can see I have a separate layer for color here. Um, pretty common in animation. And uh, you can see with the onion skin for color, it gets a little bit complicated because unlike in Flash, Flash has a pretty unique way of onion skinning where if you've got a lot of color on the screen, um, you can usually see some kind of, it uses some kind of multiply um, effect where if there's a solid fill, um, it's going to make it easier uh, to find out where the blocks of colors are. So if you do block shading, in animation in Clip Studio, you'll notice that it's kind of hard to see what is going on with the frames that are covering up the color that's already there. And there's no way to do any kind of, um, I forget what it's called. It's like some kind of, in Flash, there's like a wireframe where you can see the outlines of the vector colors. Um, so, but there's a way to replicate it in Clip Studio Paint. And I'm gonna show you that right now. Let's, make, let's open up a new file real quick and make a new timeline. And let's just make a basic, uh, let's make an animation folder. We can't forget to do that. And we'll um, make a new frame. And let's just uh, draw something real quick here. Let's just make a really blobby sphere and uh, let's say we we're going to shade it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make another another um, layer underneath this and you can see up here in the timeline section there's new raster layer and there's a new vector layer so we're going to make a vector layer and vector layers in clip studio do not function the way that uh, most typically do. In Photoshop, for example, there's a whole vector tool and they show up differently than raster stuff. But what the vector layer does in Clip Studio is it actually takes raster brushes and turns them into vector shapes. So <laughs> let's uh, very quickly, I'm just going to, let's make a highlight and then uh, just a very quick like 
shadow where we're going to shade this blob. Uh, this is very crude. But uh, if you notice here, okay, I have drawn... Oops, I actually did not draw on the, va uh, the vector layer. Let's re-select it. And... Uh, Oh, I see what's going on here. I'm going to put it underneath. All right, so I'm drawing on the on the vector layer. And then I'm going to go to the, uh, let's see, where is the operation tool? So up here, you can see this little uh, icon. It is a, a, a mouse or icon, uh, icon look, uh, clicking on a cube. Click that, and it's set, set default to object. So if I go over here, and I click that, um, you can see that it has taken a raster brush line and turned it into a vector object. And I can actually manipulate um, this object. And you can even uh, mess with these points and stuff. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about vector in uh, Clip Studio Paint. But um, what's cool about this, I'll show you in a second. Um, what's cool about this is this is really great for uh, coloring animation in Clip Studio because. What we want to do now is I'm going to make a new animation folder underneath this one. And I'm just going to say that it's our uh, color area for this circle and make a layer there. And so now, and I want to, I want to remind people here, uh, like I said earlier, there is more than one way to do this. This is just my method of how I would shade and color in Clip Studio Paint animation. Uh, if it, there, if it's not the way you like to do it, that's fine. And there's like 10 other ways to do this, but this is the way I found to be the most convenient. So if you go to the uh, fill tool here, um, oops, let me move it back down right there. So if you go to the fill tool, it's your typical fill tool. And uh, you'll notice there's some options here. There's this thing called refer multiple. We'll talk about that in a second. We're going to go back down to this wrench tool. And we're going to go to reference. And there's two checkboxes here. These are normally unchecked. This is the fill up to vector path and include vector path. What these mean is that when you're filling any area that has vector lines, it will also add the fill over the vector itself so that there won't be any gaps when you delete the, uh, the, the lines after the fact. This is really important when we're, when we're coloring our frames because we wanna make sure that there's no gaps after we're done and we don't have to meticulously go back over the animation and fill any areas that are uh, missing color um, because the, as we, I'm sure we all have colored animation before, uh, going back and making sure there's no gaps in the fills is kind of a tedious process. So we're going to click, uh, we can just click out of this after uh, we do that. You can check these. You can, all, you can either save it as a default setting. I like to have it as a default, so it's just like that. It says, do you want to replace the current settings? I'm just going to say, okay, close this. Um, and now here is how this works. You're probably wondering how in the world do you fill when the line art, the vector lines, and the fill layer are all on their own layer? How in the, how in the world does that even work? Now we're going to talk about the reference tool. So there's this little um, option up here right next to clip. It looks like a lighthouse and it says set as reference layer. Um, and I'm going to do that for this layer, and I'm going to do it for the vector layer as well. I'm actually just going to put it, uh, let's see, I'll put it right, uh, well, I can, I'll set the folder as a reference layer. Oops. Okay, so you can control click as well. I thought, I think I should mention that you should, you can actually set multiple reference layers. So I shift selected all these. Uh, you can, if you, if you shift select a folder and set it as a reference, it will also make everything in that folder reference layer. 
And then I'm going to go down to uh, my layer that I was going to use for colors. Zoom out here. And let's just pick a, uh, an inoffensive color here for our odd shaped ball. And I'll uh, fill it. And then I'll pick a shade color here. And you can see some little gaps here. We'll talk about that in a second. And uh, a highlight color. And as you can see, because I set the reference layers, uh, what it actually does is it um, just pretends, basically, that all these layers are on the same you know, plane, uh, on the same layer. They're being referenced as a place to fill. And so it treats it as, uh, you know, oh, if I'm filling, you know, if I turn this off, for example, if I turn off the reference layer thing and I, and I go back to my color layer and I press fill, you can see it fills the whole canvas because it's it's just referencing the layer that it's the colors are on where there's nothing. And then now if I go and I delete my vector layer, you can see that I mean it's not perfect, but the gap where the vector lines were are gone and there's no there's no gap there. Um there's no, you know, ugly residue where that line was before. So, um the only problem is is that there there's a little bit of white space uh, on the corners here so let me undo that and i'll go back a little bit you notice in the fill tool oh go back to it uh, we've got another option here also you always want this on refer multiple reference layers i just make sure this is always set uh, there's a close gap section um, i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with close gap if you've uh, worked in flash um, it's usually a slider in uh, Flash, but uh, you've got five uh, like uh, sensitivity settings. Uh, if you go all the way to five, uh, it's going to close large gaps. If you go all the way down to one, it's going to do really small ones. There's also a checkbox for fill narrow areas. Now, it's not perfect. Um, I will be the first to admit that. I don't think any closed gap tool really is. But just from tweaking it just a little bit, you can see fill those again, delete the uh, the vector line layer that we were using as a guide, suddenly those gaps are now gone. And you have a perfectly colored layer. And the reason why I do this, uh, again, is because Onion Skin in Clip Studio does not really uh, work that well for coloring frames. So what I like to do is, uh, when I before I start coloring my animation, is I like to make those vector layers and create uh, you know, the guidelines for where the shadows are going to go, onion skin that so I can keep those consistent, and then uh, go back, turn on the the reference layer, color my frames, and then delete all those vector layers that were I was using as guides, and then you have a nice, clean, colored animation. Um, there's other things you can do. Um, I mean, you can put those vector lines on the actual animation frame itself, which would save you a little bit of extra, uh, you know, layer mess and clutter. But the one thing that you have to remember there is that you're going to have to go back and manually delete all those vector lines and that you're, you have to make sure that these layers that you have as animation layers were vectors to begin with. Um, which, you know, you can do. But deleting individual vector lines is probably not a lot of fun. I would imagine you'd save the most amount of time um, just going with the uh, reference layer method uh, first. So now that we've covered that, the last thing I want to talk about before we get to Q&A uh, is export options. So one thing was when you're done with your animation, you want to export it and get it into whatever you want to do. Maybe you just want to put it out there. And when you go to export animation, you'll probably look at it and go, well, which one of these uh, do I want to pick? So there's image sequence, which I think speaks for itself. Um, you 
you can export every single frame uh, as a certain file type. Uh, there's really not much more to this. This is really good for if you want to import it into, you know, Vegas or After Effects, you know, programs that will automatically detect sequences as footage. Um, and this is going to do your entire animation. Uh, everything that was visible in your timeline will be compressed into a single flat image. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because if we go to uh, back to export animation, um, there's animated GIF, there's animated sticker, and there's movie. And I think you all know what those do. But there's also export animation cells. Um, so this is a little different, and this probably uh, won't be something that you'll ever need unless if uh, you're, I don't know, <laughs> working on something that requires something like this. But this export animation cells option, actually what it does is it'll export every single animation folder you have into its own folder in a giant project, uh, you know, folder branch. So if you've got, you know, five animation folders with different animation in them, it will export each one into its own folder with each cell as its own uh, image file. And uh, it's something that you would use if you were like, for example, using a timesheet, um, or if like maybe for some reason you don't want all your animation to be uh, squished into a single, um, you know, flat image, um, you would do this. And I can show you what it looks like um, because, um, and I, I think I can show this now because it's been out for a while now. Um, I will go to um, my animation folder and go to, uh, if I can find it. Yeah. So this is the anime I worked on, and this is how they do it too, because they all uh, use traditional time sheets. So um, where did I put the animation? I have to find it first. Here we go. So let's go to a sequence here. So this is uh, this is not a very exciting scene. Let's find a scene with more animation in it. Scene 206, 207, 208. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at these, so I'm just trying to find something that's going to be more fun to look at. This was done in last uh, October, by the way, September, October area. OK, this is a fun one. So open the clip file for this. Zoom out a bit. So this has a lot going on. You can see. Um, There's a layer for the bed itself. Go down here, we can see. And they have the, you have to name everything a certain way. It's like A, B, C, the whole alphabet. Uh, stuff that uh, starts with A is in the background and B is in the front. And I guess that's something to talk about too is hierarchy here. Um, a lot of people probably would find this to be pretty obvious, but this layer, this animation folder here at the bottom, this is everything that's in the background. So um, anything that's above layer A, is going to you know show up on top of it, uh, and then layer B. So if I go to, and I and I play this, you know, there's no color on this. But you can see how there's multiple things happening all at once, and then there's this whole timesheet stuff going on. And then uh, if I go to something with like a, there's one with more highlights and stuff. Uh, let 200, 202. Okay, well, this one, it doesn't have a lot of animation in it, but there's a lot of highlights and stuff, and you can see, uh, you know, how detailed and how complex some of these things can get 
you can see like one of them's moving in the in in the front and he's in he's layer C, so all the C stuff is in front of B and A, which are these two characters in the background and they're not moving really. Um so And then in this one, for instance, uh, when we did the shading for this, it's actually all on one frame. So they wanted everything to be together. And uh, that can get kind of complicated. But what you can do, and this is another method that you can use to color if, if it's something that you are okay with doing, is when you are using, for example, a, a pen to do it, and you're using, instead of the fill tool, you can change the blending mode of your pen to background. And what that does, is if I you know if I draw all over this, I'm drawing on the layer with this with this uh, with this line work, but I'm not drawing on over the line work. So, um, you know, I'm coloring and I don't have to worry about coloring over the lines. I'm sorry, I only speak English, unfortunately. Uh, so if anyone can't understand me, you probably can't even understand me saying this, but I apologize. Um, so yeah, that's another way to do it. Uh, and then when we export this animation, you can see I use the export cells and you can see it exported A, B, and C. And if I go to uh, C, you can see it did 202, layer one, two, three, and four. And when you open these in an image viewer, it's the exact same sequence of frames, one, two, three, four. So you can see it's just this by itself. And then I can just, what they would do is they they actually print these out and and scan them and, and kind of merge it all together with whatever software they use or you know I don't know if they do it manually or but that's just what they wanted me to do and Clip Studio has that option so uh, yeah you've got a lot of export options uh, when you are working in Clip Studio and uh, there's so many uh, I mean it's 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 pretty much you you can like you can even set up macros and have uh, you know, ways to quickly select the things that you want to, you know, use. Um, I'm not going to talk about that because it's like it, everyone has their own. The further you go into like macro setups and stuff, the more like personalized it gets. Just know that however you want Clip Studio to work for you, there's probably a way to do it. And uh, it, it's just incredible how flexible this software really is. Um, so with that being said, um, I talked about everything I wanted to talk about, but if I open it up to questions here, I think we can definitely fill up uh, the the second half of this with uh, more stuff because I'm sure there's some things that I missed. I'm sure there's questions that you guys have about Clip Studio, animating Clip Studio. So uh, if anybody has questions, I would love to uh, entertain them and see what you guys uh, want to know. Um, and hopefully I can answer them. I'm I, I'm not like a Clip Studio super veteran. I'd say I've been animating in Clip Studio for about um, a year, and I was kind of forced to learn it actually because uh, I needed it to. Uh, when I got my anime job, they're like, "We use Clip Studio, and you need to learn how to use it." So I kind of forced it. What is boiling? You mentioned it earlier. Um, so boiling um, comes from. The, the, it's called boiling because uh, if you like a surface line, if you were looking at boiling water, it it ripples and and you know boiling water is always fluttering around. Boiling is when the animation lines are all wiggly, and uh, it sometimes is used on purpose, like an edit and eddy, but a lot of times it's not intended and it becomes very distracting. So a boiling line is a line that is. Uh, you know, the shape is supposed to be consistent, but the line keeps moving and wiggling or changing shape and size. So a when I set when I say I don't like my my pen to have a boiling line, by forcing it to have the pressure sensitivity off, uh, it guarantees that that line is going to stay the stay the same stay the same shape, no matter how much I use it. Which uh, my animation style does not lend well to boiling lines, so I do not. Uh, want that in my um animations so um there's a really good question in here uh by arzana um are there any similar methods to using symbols like in flash while animating in csp 
That is a good question. For example, if I want to animate something repeating itself without having to manually copy and paste cells over and over again, um, I do not think so. Unfortunately, uh, this is not really, uh, there's no library in Clip Studio Paint. So uh, if you wanted to animate, uh, you know, like, you know how there's tweens in Flash where you can just take a symbol and just kind of stretch it and do all that. Um, that is not something you can do in Clip Studio. So if that is something that is that if that's your style of animating, you don't. This is I would say Clip Studio is very strictly lean towards. It's a Japanese piece of software, and it uh, you know was designed with the 2D animation industry in mind, and so there really isn't something like that in this. I think the closest thing I can think of is that in, in Photoshop, which we're not talking about today, Photoshop's timeline tool does have something kind of like that. But I think Photoshop's animation tools are an absolute nightmare. And I've worked with them many times because uh, uh, we use them on Skullgirls and Indivisible over at uh, Lab Zero, now known as Future Club. But um, yeah, it's definitely, I would say no. And uh, if, if that's something you're looking for, it's probably one of the weaknesses of Clip Studio Paint because it really cannot do that. Um, so uh, I think the next question I can scroll through the chat here, are there any good tutorials for learning clip animation? Yes, and that's actually one of the amazing things about uh, Clip Studio compared to most of the you know Adobe Suite type stuff is if you, I'm sure you notice when you open Clip Studio, there's like this launcher and uh, it's got all this like community stuff. There's a whole like community section of Clip Studio, which is full of free tutorials, uh, free assets. You can see here, there's like Clip Studio assets, ask, tips, share. Um, once you create an account, which is free, um, you can go here, you can go through your browser too. You can go to Clip Studio's community site. There are a plethora of free resources for Clip Studio. It's absolutely incredible. If you're looking for cool brushes, if you're looking for cool macros, um, I mean, it's just unbelievable what the community has created for Clip Studio. Unlike Adobe, where they just have a crappy forum or unhelpful uh, help files, uh, Clip Studio is uh, very much community driven. And um, there's so many tutorials on how to animate and clip. Um, um, some of them just do direct to YouTube videos. Personally, I don't like learning from YouTube videos because I just get bored after a while and I just want to skip to the parts that uh, I like to have uh, tutorials that are written down. But the Clip Studio community section um, uh, allows you to create tutorials like that. So yeah, um, I don't have any one specifically uh, because I never really looked it up. I just kind of uh, was flying by the seat of my pants and I was able to learn this just kind of messing around with the keyframe uh, area. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, demo files, that's another thing that I would recommend. And I'd actually be happy to share some of these files with some of you guys if you'd like to. I could just, uh, I don't know how, how the best way to go about that, but I could just upload some Clip Studio Paint files or give you a Google Drive link for you guys to just uh, open these up and uh, you know see how they work. That's how I like to learn. I like to take things apart and put them back together. So maybe that's something some of you would be interested in. If so, uh, I'd be more than happy to share uh, some of these. So uh, let's see. Um, I don't know if this is a question for me. It says, are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm right-handed. <laughs> um, someone says, I draw with my left and touch PP with left. Okay, that's uh, thank you for sharing that with everybody. Um, let's see. Uh, would you be able to animate an example of you taught us today to fill in the second hour? Yeah, I can do a quick uh, demo animation. We can maybe we can just do a quick bouncing ball or something. I'll do that in a moment here. Um, have you tried making each individual cell into its own subfolder? That way I'd have lines, colors, and shading all in the cell, but still different layers if that makes sense. Yeah, this goes back to uh, me talking about that there is more than one way to animate in Clip Studio. You can definitely do that. Um, the reason why I don't do it is because I don't like a very uh, a timeline with a giant scroll bar. It might sound uh, silly, uh, but it's our, some of these are already as long enough uh, as it is, and so I don't like to have uh, I don't I don't I don't like to set up and organize my um, files that way. But um, that is doing it that way. Like I said, there's there's no wrong way really to animate. You know, if you find something that's more comfortable for you. 
um, that is uh, really, that's great because um, at the end of the day, all that matters, unless if you're working on a project that requires specific setups for your, for your CSP files, which is probably uh, unlikely, um, all that matters is the end result at the end of the day. Uh, Nabella says, I missed the first half of this. Would you mind doing it all again? <laughs> uh, has Future Club switched from Photoshop? No, they have not. Um, how about sound, sound importing? I don't know if Clip Studio Paint ever got that feature. Uh, actually, it did, yes. And so actually, Dr. Grambo uh, underneath here said that I believe they just added it, but they don't have audio scrubbing. That is correct. Um, if you go down here, um, you can create uh, sound layers. And you can import sounds into this, I believe. I've done it once. Um, let's, let's see if, uh, if I can remember how to do it. Because um, I did it for some lip syncing. And I think the best way to do it, honestly, is that you can create notes. Oh, yeah, there's an audio layer here, a new animation uh, fo la uh, layers. You can create an audio folder or an audio layer. There it is. So it says audio one. And then you would just import, you know, a WAV file or whatever. And what, what happens is when you press play, the audio will play through, but you cannot scrub. If you do this with the frames, uh, you can scrub animation just fine, but you can't listen to the audio. So uh, one thing that I did is, uh, you know, you kind of have to mess with the, the blue uh, bars here that allow you to uh, set the amount of frames that you are listening to and just kind of play it by ear. It's unfortunate. I'm hoping someday they add scrubbing. I've looked it up, and honestly, I couldn't tell you if they're ever going to do it or not. And it would it would certainly help. Um, but yeah, I've I've only used it for lip syncing. I wouldn't recommend this, for example, if you were going to make like you know a, a whole cartoon in this, like you were going to do in Flash with multiple audio layers everywhere. It's not really ideal for that. Um, it's 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 more for like certain scenes, like uh, you know. For for the animation I worked on, like we would have, you know, here's here's your cut, and then there's like 13 individual scenes in it, and and they and they range from like anywhere from like two to 10 seconds long, and if there was any audio in it, they would say, well, uh, you know, the character's talking here, so you know, provide some mouths or something. But if you were going to do it, you know, you would you could do it in here. You could have the, uh, you know, I what I do is if I do loop, do lip syncing, I have the um, the mouth shapes named in the animation layers over here instead of numbers i would have you know here's the o shape here's the a shape here's the closed mouth etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah um what's some brushes you recommend um i really love the default g pen in here um but the i also really like there's a there's a pen called the uh, the real g pen this is something i downloaded uh, off of the clip studio community area uh it's just yeah, it's a little bit more, uh, the line's a little bit more gristly. It kind of looks more like a pencil. In fact, I used the real G-Pen on this animation, and you can see that, you know, it's not as smooth. If I if I pick the regular G-Pen, and let me pick the, the line art layer right here. I'll turn the onion skin off uh, and zoom in. Let's get a, let's see, this is probably like a three. Turn off pen pressure, and uh, there. Zoom in. Draw a line next to it. Uh, if it lets me, is the line, layer locked? The layer's probably locked. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, it's locked. Yeah, so there's the real G pen, and then here's the regular G pen right next to it. And you can see the real G pen has a little bit of uh, noise on the edges of it. There's other, there's other, there's plenty of other, anything in the pen subtool you can see up here. Uh, it's probably going to, you know, work for certain people, uh, depending on what your preference is. The reason why I like the G-Pen is that it just, it creates a real crisp line. And if you need any sharp edges, it's really good at creating those. Um, it, um, it's like basically kind of the default, I would say, the default brush in Clip Studio. And it's a, it's not as soft as like the default Photoshop brush, which I really don't like because it's actually really hard to make nice crisp lines with that. Um, but you can, I mean, you can even change the hardness of the G pen if you want. Um, there's so many options in, in the, uh, the sub tool for every pen and 
if you use Photoshop and you want to move to Clip Studio, Clip Studio now supports importing Photoshop brushes. All you have to do is export your Photoshop brushes into uh, those, I think they're called PSBs, and then uh, drag them into uh, Clip Studio, and it works. I've tried it several times with all kinds of wacky brushes, and I don't know how they did it, but they managed to figure out how to do it. Um, let's see. I'm in an abusive relationship with Adobe. I have, I've been there. <laughs> um, I've had a love-hate relationship with Flash pretty much my whole life. I gave the files, Macromedia Flash 8 gang. <laughs> um, are smears or multiples something you do often? Yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of smears. You can see there's a little smear on this one uh, right here. Uh, that her her hand smears. I don't do. I usually do uh, like a, a action line smears. Uh, I don't usually do the multiple thing, uh, but I love smears. Um, I lo I lo lively kind of fusion of um, you know Western more Western style smears and in anime you don't see them a whole lot. I mean, there's some studios that like them like Trigger, but. Um, I think a, a good smear in the right place can add a lot. So yeah, I love smears. Um, is there a VCam or camera in Clip Studio Paint? Um, I don't think so. There because I there's no camera stuff in here. Um, I know that the new versions of Animate have a camera with like a zoom and everything, um, but I I don't believe there's any such thing in Clip Studio, unfortunately. Um, so if you wanted to emulate camera movement, you would have to just do that kind of manually. Does Clip Studio get laggy with animation files? Um, well, the files itself, no, but I have had some issues with playback from time to time. I'm not really sure why, but sometimes it'll skip frames and stuff. And uh, I've noticed that if you, even though onion skin is not something that like you would have enabled um, or you would think would not affect playback, sometimes I've noticed that turning onion skin off while, do, while playing um, it can help with that because uh, it's not really great when you're trying to see your animation and frames are skipping because you can, you're like, well, what's going on here? Um, that says, I've been trying to color someone else's vector animation in Clip Studio, but I actually don't know how to color line art to be different colors without resolution loss. The bouncy ball is very pixel crunchy without aliasing, but is there some method of painting on top? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by painting on top, but so, this, a lot of these tools have an anti-aliasing um, option here where you can change like the amount of aliasing on the tool itself. Um, it's usually set to this one here, which is weak. Um, if you set it a little bit higher, maybe that will help uh, with the, the crunchiness of the, the line. So uh, check that out, see if that helps. Um, earlier you said you were forced to learn Clip Studio for a job. Is it safe to say that depending on where you work, you'll have to learn to use a different program? Um, uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think for me specifically, the reason why I learned Clip Studio was because of its unique exporting options for cells, which uh, work with Japanese timesheets. So that was kind of a, a very niche thing that they needed. Um, but I think generally, you know, with most jobs, all they're going to want is the end product. I mean, it's, it's very rare that I have to send in the actual source file. So, um, but it is... If you know, if you have to learn another piece of software, I mean, obviously, like having the software is is, is definitely one of the big um, hurdles to jump. Um, but you know, I've been using I I got I got away with using just Flash and Photoshop for you know fifteen years. So, <laughs> um, let's see, interspecies reviewers animated completely with Clip Studio it wouldn't surprise me. Um, a lot of people say G Pen versus Real G Pen. I love the Real G Pen. Looks like yeah, a lot of people uh, loving the G Pen. Uh, testing out animation using Krita. Okay, yeah. 
It's a hassle to export animation to GIF. Would it, could it be possible to export clips to animation files into various files like GIF? Much easier where they'll have to be patients at exporting large animation files. Um, it can get slow when you're doing um, export of like the sequences, but I wouldn't say that like you have to be like super patient. I mean, it, it's it's not like oh boom done like snap of the finger, but um, you know the exports are reasonable enough. Uh, keep in mind though, I've never used uh, the export animation options of animated sticker, which is an APNG file. I've honestly never seen an APNG file. I don't even know sites that support them. And I've never used the movie uh, export, as well as Open Tunes, because I don't use Open Tunes. There's also Exposure Sheet. You can even export audio. Um, these are probably more for production line stuff, but yeah. Um, someone says, Krita sucks for animation. Well, it can't suck as hard as Photoshop. That If it does, I'd, I'd honestly be impressed. Um, how do you decide on which frame should be the keyframes? Uh, well, this is a kind of a more general animation question, but keyframes are usually like um, the the key motions in in a in a uh, in a movement. So like if we're let's go ahead and just make a new thing here because we wanted to do a demonstration and it was got a half an hour left, so that should be plenty of time to do a basic animation. But like the the one example I always love to use is a punch. So let's go here and so if you have a guy and you you want to animate a punch, so a punch usually has like you know like a wind-up, where he's like about to punch. He's winding his, his arm back, you know? Um, well, there's usually like, first there's, you know, maybe they're just standing there and then, and then they wind up and then they actually punch. This is a horrible drawing, but, you know, punch. So like, one, two, three. So like, these would be like the keys and it's like, What's the moment, like, imagine you're reading a comic, you know, and in the comics, like, they always show the most impactful moment. So, like, if, if there was going to be a really powerful punch, there'd probably be, like, a frame where he's bringing his fist back and really winding up that punch, and then there's, you know, the actual impact. Everything else is an in-between, so, like, you know, the, the frame 2A here would be, like, you know, a big smear frame where that punch is actually going in. And then th these, there'd be a bunch of frames in between one and two here where he's winding his fist back, you know? So keys are always like, if you were going to pick the frames that you'd want to, you know, put in a comic, those would be your key frames. That's a good way to think about it. Um, I hate how when there's more chat, it doesn't keep where I was scrolled. It just keeps uh, going up and down. I may have missed some uh, questions here. I'm hoping not. I hope I didn't. Uh, I got clips is free with my tablet. That's epic. Um, all right. So it looks like I'm caught up. Uh, if I if I missed any things in Xenix, you feel free to interject. Um, but uh, let's do a quick animation. Go ahead and if, if you want to say anything while I'm doing this, let's do a bouncing ball just to show how the animation works and everything. Yeah, I was looking through chat. I think you got most of them, and you got to them like really quickly. Like I was scrolling to the questions, and then you get to it like really fast. So you did. Oh, well. good. Okay. I'm yeah. Glad I didn't miss anything. It's like you're used to this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of streaming. So uh, usually not an audience this big, but you guys have been awesome. Um, all right. So setting up a a background layer here, and by the way. One thing I just did there, you're probably like, how did you make a line that straight? Well, uh, my hand is not that steady. I wish it was. But if you uh, press down, you make a dot, hold shift, uh, you get a straight line tool. So uh, you just click, and then you get lines. So that's a there's a little pointer there. All right, so let's make a new animation folder. And we'll just call it ball. Um, I know bouncing ball is not very exciting, but Can I animate a GIF of Zen crying. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's more interesting than a ball. I guess we could do that. What? Maybe I could put his. Maybe I could put his face on the ball and have him bounce <laughs> around. Let's try that. That would be pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. Let's see if I can pull you up here on. Uh, uh, new grounds. Where where does your avatar come from? 
Oh, like um, the uh, repeating GIF avatar that I have right now. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's from uh, Chutney Glaze. Shout out to Chutney Glaze. He's uh, shout really... out to Chutney Glaze. Yeah, really talented animator. Um, if you Let's need, if you need a reference of Zen, um, you can I, 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 you type. In... I clicked on uh, the like a comic of you. Oh no! And with your little beanie. Yeah, my little beanie boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's perfect for a ball. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you just make you into a little ball. Awesome. Uh, now, one thing I like to do when I'm animating is I like to do these like unclosed lines where there's like little gaps in the line work. I don't know why. It's just something that I, for some reason, I just love the look of it. I love, you know, like the the stupid anime mouths where there's like a smile, but there's like this gap you know yeah. um i just love how that looks and and that's why uh the closed gap tool is so great i love it because um there it allows you it allows you to fill you know even if you have those uh those stupid gaps in the lines um like i'll just show really quick if i open up the fill tool here um and let's put the set close gap to like the middle and just fill. Let's see if it behaves with uh, the lines I just set. Yeah, kind of. I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, see, it didn't get that one. Um, but if I increase close gap to four, let's see if it. Yeah. So it's trying its best. Um, it's not perfect. You can see that it made a little like square shape. But again, you know, you can just uh, go back over and and do this. And um, but you know. <sighs> Man, the reason why I love closed gap so much is because Photoshop doesn't have closed gap. And it's so frustrating because there are so many times when I just want to use a selection tool and just, you know, you know, quickly uh, you know, fill something and Photoshop just you no, know, no, it's been around for so many years and it's just a tool they absolutely refuse to add. Uh it it uh I just don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> That's that's the thing. It's a big difference between Photoshop and Eclipseo. Photoshop kind of like accidentally got adapted, you know, by like painters and stuff. It was originally created for like photo, you know, editing and stuff, and uh, you know, and then like painters trying to like eventually were like, I want to you know use this to, uh, you know, paint, and then like people kind of like jerry rigged it so that you could use it for painting. Same thing happened with Flash. Flash was really made for like designing websites and making GUIs and weird shit like that, uh, and and uh you know now it's um they they re they rebranded it to adobe animate um so like you know obviously we use it for animation for so long and it's it's even an industry tool but like really when you you think about it there's a lot of shortcomings with flash when it comes to animation but we've gotten so used to it you know for years i was i didn't want to move away from from flash cuz i was so used to uh using it all right, so that's going to be like the apex of the bounce there. And uh, what's the gooeyest gooey you've ever seen? Um, the gooeyest <laughs> gooey. I don't know. I don't know what that really means, but the gooeyest, uh, probably like Winamp. I don't know, because you can like you can edit it to be gooey. <laughs> you can, like make an actual literally gooey uh, gooey, a literally gooey gooey. That's a that's a that's a sentence I didn't think I was going to say today. It really whips the llama's ass. Yeah. Oh man. I I mean that's that's going to age me quite a bit. I I'm quite the boomer now because I I remember Winamp and I grew up with Winamp. Nice. Whenever I, I describe your style to someone, I always say it's really relaxed because you never close any of your lines up. I'm always like RTI. That's a good way to describe it. Super relaxed. And it works for like fluid animation, you know what I mean? I yeah, that. yeah. Uh, I so my my like animation, uh, you know, the people I look up to the most, uh, Hiroyuki, Maishi, Sushio, all the guys that were in Gainax and made Fooly Cooly and stuff. Um, they are just my animation heroes, man. Um, I would. I would work for them for free, even though I know that's a horrible idea. <laughs> I just, I would love to just work on one thing, even if it was just one drawing. I'd say that I could work with them. It was a dream just to work on an anime in general, um, even though um, 
all the rumors are true. The pay is terrible. The deadlines are insane, and the whole thing is a hot mess. But you know, it's it's really a, 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 a different experience. Uh, if you ever get an opportunity to do it, and you're an animator, I would say at least try it once and see how you feel. You'll probably uh, wish that you were dead. But you know, it's uh, I mean, that's what being an animator is like. You know. Do you think you'll go back to it? Go back to another like anime? <laughs> um, man, you know, I know people who do it for a living and I don't know how they survive because like it's just the pay for the amount of work you put in is is so unfair. It's it's like I know like in general animation just generally is known for not paying well, but um man, like that was really brutal. I I it's something I would probably come back to maybe occasionally um but i definitely couldn't do it like full time um but if someone came up to me and said hey you know you want to work on this thing and I, i'd probably just okay okay i'll do it <laughs> i don't know it's just it's so cool to see your name go you know in the credits and stuff see your name in the credits go by and say i, I worked on that you know yeah um but yeah I, it was like three weeks of work um, they pay at least the studio I worked for, which is Doga Kobo. Um, a lot of you probably have know them if you watch anime. You probably know them for New Game. Um, that's probably their most popular anime. Or How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift? Um, they did that too. I worked on Sleepy Princess, as I said earlier. Um, that's what they're that's what they're known for. So um, it was twenty dollars for each keyframed scene, and thirty dollars if you cleaned it up, which you didn't have to do. But uh, yeah. And how uh, long did that, that uh, typically take you? Um, so I had 13 cuts. And it took me three weeks to really get it all done. And I got paid $240. Oh, so. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, and ew. that's why people who work in the animation industry or in anime, they usually are working on multiple shows at once because, uh, yeah. No, man. Uh, they they to make ends meet. You just have to, you know, do lots of stuff at once. If if any, if anyone wants to like find out about the anime in industry or animation industry, there's like a cool little um, community that's called like the Animator Dormitory. And yes. If you check them out, they'll tell you all the facts going on, how much they get paid, and. The fact that like most of the studios are in Tokyo, which is a very high cost of living, and they try to help them out as much as they can. So I like I support them on Patreon for that very reason. Yes, I was going about to say they have a Patreon. Your money goes directly towards supporting young animators in Japan, uh, helping them have a place to live uh, while they're working and getting their footing. Because uh, the the animators at the lowest tier uh, get paid the least. They make around ten thousand dollars a year on average. Um, they, they, a lot of them just, you know, they live with their parents and, um, uh, because they, they can't make ends meet on their own and they have a lot of roommates. Some even sleep in the studios. I mean, it's just, it's insane. Yeah. And, and like, uh, one of the people that they helped or that lived with them ended up working on Attack on Titan. So it definitely like paves the way for skilled animators to do what they love. Yes. All right. So here's a bouncing. <laughs> he's, so, he's so hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad someone suggested this because, like, a ball by itself would be just kind of boring. But... <laughs> I can feel pain for eternity. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eternal pain. This is this is this is animation is a representation of what it's like to work in the animation industry. Just constant pain. You're just ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, just getting yeah. smashed against concrete. <laughs> so let's try and adjust the timing a bit. Let's keep you up in the air a little bit longer. And uh, squ the squish. Let's see. So as you can see, I'm animating on threes. This is a habit I picked up from the animation industry. It's uh, it's what they they do. They they work in threes. It's really strange because it's not divisible by two. So if you want to do ones, you kind of have to like do two ones. So imagine getting paid. Yeah, imagine sleeping. Imagine it's it's really brutal. Um, and you know it's another thing. It's another issue. Is like there there's really no unionization of workers in Japan, and it's kind of like an unspoken thing is that they just it's 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 unseemly to complain so you know they just kind of uh roll with it and they care so much about what they're what they're creating that they they don't let it get in the way of you know um their passion and it's like you have to be passionate to to be in that industry but 
um it's it's so brutal and you i mean you 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 you'll find articles of you know animators who uh were hospitalized you know because of their their overworking themselves and um some students have gotten some flack for that but you know at, at the end of the day nothing really happens to them there's no consequence oh uh here's a big tip uh the r button rotate canvas huge deal cuz uh yeah you know, I, I went way too long not knowing that uh, Flash at some point had added a rotate canvas button. So, uh, <laughs> cannot live without it. Let's see if this squishes. Yeah, sometimes you gotta. You see, I got the onion skin on right now. I can see my keys and stuff. And let's see if that's. <laughs> oh my God. It's just in yeah, pain, we're... man. That's all I see. <laughs> So nothing personal. It's nothing personal. <laughs> um, Let's see here. I mean, you could have been a happy bouncing ball man thing. Could have been, but my uh, my eye kind of normally have him like with tears in his eyes. I don't know why. That's <laughs> that's his shtick. If anyone wants to see RTIL animating Flash, go to his uh, Newgrounds. Go to his movies. Lighthouse Girls finally on new grounds. You want to check that out? It looks fa well. Was that that was that in Flash? Was Lighthouse Girl made in Flash? It was. Yes, it was. Um, the animation, anyways. So because uh, I was, I made that back in two thousand and nine, uh, and yeah, it's, it's back, baby. <laughs> it's on new grounds. It's gorgeous. Yes, yeah, where it belongs. Thank it's you. <laughs> You can also read RTIL, RTIL's um like uh nine year hiatus or what was it? It was like uh it's in his news post if you go there. It's like a nine year hiatus recap. So you wanna see stuff on Yeah, I don't write cool. news posts a lot, so it's not too far buried in there. Uh I, I basically I left Newgrounds for nine years. Um and I uh, came back in December of twenty nineteen. Started posting again, and realized that uh, I'd been missing out, and that Newgrounds is still something very special. Hell yeah! Um, because it's very community driven. There's a lot of things that you know, like because a lot of the modern social media and stuff, you know, Twitter and Facebook, it's all algorithm driven, and uh, it's it's hard to you know gain a foothold. You know, I was fortunate enough that. Even after after leaving Newgrounds for that long, that pe some people still remembered who I was. But you know, imagine like starting on Twitter. You know, you got zero followers, and there's there is no person looking at you know your your stuff and and saying, oh, this deserves to be shown. You know, on the front page, there is no front page. There's, it's just all um, handpicked. You know. Yeah. So like apples off a tree. <laughs> it's like someone actually cares or something. You know. Weird. Yeah, like an actual human being is is looking <laughs> at my stuff. What the fuck? You don't have to cater to an audience or nothing, man. You just put good shit on there and you'll get recognized. I don't have to make uh, Finger Family, Spider Man, Elsa, weird bullshit to get recognized <laughs> by a weird computer algorithm. <laughs> right. And um, speaking from the perspective of just reaching out to animators on uh, new grounds, I know. Fanta Show reached out to Meat Canyon on Newgrounds, and then they did a meetup, and now they work together on, like, his YouTube series, and, as well as, like, Monster Lab and all the parodies, and then Sierra Sora as well. Um, I know hey, OPC reached out to Droid, and then they became boys, and it's just the amount of people you can reach out to on Newgrounds is, like, imp implicable. It's Yeah, it really is. And it's good to see. I mean, I can't. I can't imagine how it. I. I so Friday Night Funkin' <laughs> is like absurdly popular, and I feel like it's started like some kind of new Newgrounds revolution. <laughs> Absolutely, we can't stop talking about it on the podcast. It's, it's insane how it blew up, and it was. Oh my made God, is that real? They one point two seven five million now. <laughs> yeah. <For> real. <laughs> that is that is incredible wild and well people don't understand the number either but it's like it's like you're paying for animation for the entire game you're paying for extra music you're paying for a lot and it, when it comes down to four people splitting up that price like their initial goal was just sixty thousand, and 
it just goes to show a lot, a lot of people just latch onto a concept and they'll support it. And that's so cool. Jab Moss says, would you rather get millions of views doing those videos or making amazing anime visuals and getting badly paid? Exactly. I mean, it's definitely the latter a thousand times because, you know, the, the people who chase the algorithm, you know, they're not making what they want to make. They're just making stuff because they have to make it, you know, and it just becomes like you're, you're, you're clout chasing and you kind of forgot why you got into it. Right. So, um, that, that would be, you know, my ultimate nightmare. I mean, and that was my, my first job, you know, I, I, I worked at a studio that made uh, games for, for babies pretty much. And I hated it so much. And, uh, I, I started to grow to hate animating and I was terrified because I was like, Oh my God, like I spent, you know, I went to university for this. I, I, you know, I, I put my, this, I was hedging my bets on this being like my future and I hate it, you know? And, 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 um, that's not something that you, you want to experience ever. Fortunately, I got out of that, you know, but, uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. Um Friday Night Funkin' is is super cool and um I I, I love rhythm games, so that was um something that uh I, I, I feel like a lot of people who played Friday Night Funkin' probably have never played DDR or Beat Mania or any of those games because they're kinda like boomer shit now. <laughs> and uh, you know, so they're that might be Friday Night Funkin' might be their expert first experience with like a, a story driven, like DDR inspired, you know, the up down left right um yeah kind of game and it's so it's, it just oozes style and um the music is incredible and uh you know i'm so happy for them i can't believe it blew up like it did i'm glad it did um oh yeah i no, think it's, it's just, just what people oh, wanted it's... like it's been so long since a good rhythm game came out and then that one just hit it like on the head and yeah and it, just a team that came together to do it like dave's a good animator so or oh yeah K. like and and the the cool thing about the Friday Night Funkin' animations too is that they're um, I'm gonna have a couple like tears flying out. <laughs> the cool thing about uh, the animation in Friday Night Funkin' is that that's like very keyframe driven animation because the the frames are actually pretty limited. But like um, each frame is like such a dynamic pose that it just like you can feel like the dancing and the, and the movement in it. And, um, I, I, it's, it's such a cool way to animate cause I like limited frame animation. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I think you can get a lot done with very few frames. Cause you know, animating on threes, that's eight frames per second. That's not a lot of frames. Um, but in, in, in the anime industry and that's kind of how they work, you know, they're like, how do we get the most impact out of the least amount of frames? Because we're, we're working our, our asses off here, you know, trying to, uh, you know, get these things done and their, their deadlines are nuts. And so, um, limited animation can be a lot cooler. Cause you know, people say like, Oh, this needs more frames. It needs to be like super smooth and stuff. And I was like, well, you know, sometimes adding more frames doesn't necessarily make it going to make it good. It, it might actually ruin some of the impact of the frames that are there already. Um, because timing is a really key factor in animation. And if you screw that up, then uh, you kind of have this weird kind of smooth looking jelly thing where, um, you know, stuff is just kind of boring looking. Yeah. So you can, you, I mean, you can mess up good keyframes with bad in-betweens. I, I, I can't stress that enough. I like the way you put that. Oh, and back on the Friday Night Funkin' thing, you must have felt nostalgic seeing the art style for that, like the way it's in, like drawn in Flash, like that style. Yeah, that, nice. that, that, that really crisp, cel-shaded, thick lines. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I mean, you know, my, one of my biggest inspirations when I first started was, and, and we only have like five minutes left, so I'm not going to color this, but uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to link uh, some Clip Studio Paint files in the Google uh, from a Google Drive for you guys too, uh, if you want to open them up and comb through them. And uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll we'll call it. I guess I don't want to because I have to have to be done. But um, <clears throat> my, one of my first inspirations was Jet Set Radio. So uh, that cell shaded thick line stuff with the hard edge shading is like it's my aesthetic. You know. <laughs> yeah. How would you say about getting into the industry, like working at a game studio, not particularly for animation but for art? I mean, games is always going to be a huge thing. I, I mean, I, a lot, like half the work I do is, is game related animation stuff. You really can't go wrong with games. I mean, there's always like cool startups and things happening, animation for games. And, and you know, 2D is experiencing a huge revival over the last couple of years. I feel like, you know, during the early 2000s, people were like, oh, 2D is coming, 2D going out. It's all 3D now. I mean, while I do think it's going to, it's good to have a 3D skill set, like, um, you know, I, 
I personally, and I'm just speaking for myself here personally, for the last like 15 years, and, and, and as a professional, I've been working for about uh, eight years, nine years. I have never once needed to open a 3D program. I, I work, I've, I've made a living. Not, I'm not rich, I, but I'm comfortable. I, I make a comfortable living off of 2D animation. That's all I do. 2D animation and art. And I, I, I'm, I've been self-employed since 2012. And you know, I, I made it work. It was hard at first because you gotta you gotta find the right people, and you gotta you know you might not do a lot of things that you like to do at first. But I've I've managed to create a career where I, I'm able to to do things that I like. And uh, you know, there's it's the internet connects all of us. I mean, the internet is just I, I can't stress how I couldn't do my job without the internet. I really couldn't. Um, and because if you don't live in the right area, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities. I mean, I live in the Seattle area, so there are game studios here, but I mean, they're all like you know uh, like. Uh, Bungie is here and Microsoft and and a lot of that's not really my expertise. I I used to know 3D, but I, I lost it all because I I was only interested in 2D. I always wanted to be a 2D animator, and I'm just so glad that things turned out the way that they did. That these opportunities exist, and uh, things like, I mean, the the Kickstarter stuff is incredible. I mean, look at this. Like Friday Night Funkins raised uh, over a million dollars just from fans to to make what they want to make. I mean, that's that's the cool. I mean, the internet is is full of garbage but um you know for all the garbage that's there that that makes up for it um stuff like that oh yeah so, so let me quickly grab a clip studio file for you guys to to download uh let's i'll just i'll just give you guys the um the galco chan one that i uh was uh clip studio file that i was working in and let me close it so that it's it doesn't save the changes i made to it um And then um, another thing too, um, because this file, I mean, is kind of older. It's one of the first ones I did, and it doesn't have a lot of the residue left over that I used to create it. Um, like the, you know, stuff I was talking about earlier, like, um, you know, uh, vector using vector um, to do coloring and stuff. If you guys have questions for me. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to me. I always am. I'm always open to answer animation questions. Um, for some reason, Google Drive is not working. Okay. Well, maybe let's see how big this file is. Oh, it's too big. What happens if I copy link to clipboard? Okay. Oh, this is really frustrating. <laughs> the one time I want Google Drive to. Oh, here we go. Links sharing settings. Why is this blank? Why? <laughs> I don't know. Of course, the one time I need it, more than any other time, it's not working. Um, <clears throat> oh, let's see what happens if I zip it. Let's uh, let's turn it into a zip file. See how big the zip is. It's ten megabytes. No, I, I don't have Discord. Whatever you know, the premium. Epic Nitro. meme and <laughs> Nitro. Um, oh my gosh, why? <laughs> it's blank. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, um, I don't, I don't know. Let's maybe there's a smaller one I can share with you guys. Um, are you still animating on Clipsio Paint, or do you work on other apps? Um, recently, uh, Clipsio Paint and um, Clipsio Paint and Photoshop. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, those are those are what I've been working in the most lately. But I also, you know, I, I can animate in Flash, but I haven't been in there in a while. So let's export a GIF of this, and I'll just give you guys this boing, this, this bouncing Zinzinix thing. It's not the one I wanted to share with you guys because it's <laughs> very simple. Um, but we can show here's here's a GIF for you guys, and uh, it's. Well, there's a lot of empty space on there, but <laughs> and then here's the clip file, which is only 500 kilobytes, and uh, hopefully Discord doesn't think it's a virus or anything. Let's crop it real quick, and then uh, I looks like I'm out of time. So if you if you're able to upload uh, the Galco one later, like on Google Drive, you can always send me the link to that, and I'll be sure to share that with everyone. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll, whenever I'll, I'll I'll restart Google Drive and see if I can get it to work. Um. Gosh. RTIL, everybody. Yep, this is it for me. So uh, 
I'll just one last quick question and see if I can answer it quickly. Would you say animation Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint is this grown a bit in more in demand recently or is it a preference thing? Uh, Photoshop, no, it's definitely, I don't, I don't know why they picked Photoshop back in the day for Skullgirls and Indivisible. That's just what we use. I hate it. It's it's uh, terrible animation. Clip Studio Paint, yes. I think that it's big future. Uh, so yeah, if you want to learn how to animate Clip Studio, it'll be useful. In, in your career if you're interested in animating as a career. Thanks everybody for watching. You guys have been awesome. Um, I, I could talk you guys' head off about animation all day, but I'm out of time, so thank you. Thank you, RTIL, man. Everybody, big clap for RTIL. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. Uh, CSP. Thank you, Zenix as now well. Now you know how to picture. animate. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's, we'll got to do this again sometime. I would love to. <laughs> You've been a great guest. Um, next up, we have the audience draw. I'm going to open up uh, three voice chats if anyone can talk, anyone can draw. So if you guys just want to hang out while we take a little break so I can, I don't know, drink some water or something, that'd be awesome.